the United States of America. We have 12,000 people inside. I'm going to have to get going inside in a moment. But I just want to thank all of you for coming out. What a fantastic crowd. I believe we're going to be able to stream outside here as well. Thank you. That is why I have introduced legislation that does a couple of fairly revolutionary things. Number one, it says that in the United States of America, every public college and university will be tuition free. A president of the people, by the people, and for the people. Uh, you can say whatever you want about Bernie Sanders, man. Bernie Sanders is a true revolutionary, is a guy who... who who shuck the Democratic Party at its core, who profess that health care in America is a right, not a privilege. Right? Bernie Sanders, the great, the great leader, the great, the great leader, Bernie Sanders, he's not even, he didn't even have a heart problem 24 hours ago. And the New York Times is on his back. They're poking fucking holes in his heart already. They're just stabbing him in the back, the fucking New York Times. Already, right? So... We'll take a look at that article. Uh, the there's some new fake polls out. The uh, real clear politics fake polls. We'll look at that and see how it's coloring everything. You know, coloring the uh, upcoming debate. Right. So there's an upcoming debate, October fifteenth. Uh, new all the twelve candidates have been chosen. They've been chosen officially chosen going into uh, October fifteenth. It's twelve candidates. Right. So. So let's start off again. Bernie Sanders, well, Bernie Sanders, that's the lead story. We'll start off with uh, a funny story. So Putin, right? <laughs> this is great. Uh, so Russiagate is one of the biggest thorns in Bernie Sanders' side, right? Un indisputably. If he would have looked into the camera and said, you know, Rachel Maddow, shut the hell up, right? If he would have said to the Democratic establishment that you stole this election from me in 2016 and not Russia... Bernie Sanders would have been a bigger rock star than he already is. I think that's a given. But Putin, uh, Vladimir Putin, the king of Russia, didn't stop at taking a jab. It's pretty funny. So we'll definitely interfere in 2020. Just don't tell anyone. Tell anyone. Putin mockingly tells NBC reporters. <laughs> ah, sense of humor, right? Absolutely no laughing matter for the likes of Rachel Maddow and others who have now spent years locked deep in the Russiagate navel-gazing. But at least Putin still hasn't lost his sense of humor about it. Well, what else is he going to do? He's got to laugh at it. It's a joke. While speaking on a panel of, of industry and political leaders at the Russian Energy Week con uh, conference, Putin mocked reporters already alleging Moscow plans to interfere in the 2020 presidential election. When pressed by NBC News correspondent uh, over whether former special counsel Robert Mueller was accurate in predicting Russia would, quote, attempt to interfere in the 2020 election, Putin leaned forward in a gesture to act like he was whispering a secret, quote, I'm going to tell you a secret, quote, yes, we will definitely intervene. Just don't tell anybody. <laughs> uh, so that's pretty funny, right? You know, it's, and then he goes on to say, you know, we have enough of our own problems, Putin continues. We are engaged in resolving internal problems and are primarily focused on that. Uh, so, it, you know, Russiagate again, to the Russians, it's a joke. I've never met a Russian that actually believed that, that the Russian government interfered in the election because it's not, it's a bullshit story. Of course, the Democrats got caught cheating and they blamed the Russians, right? We know that. There were no GRU agents. Mueller was a plant. Mueller was a CIA hack, an FBI hack, whatever. Right. So, so again, Bernie Sanders, he's, he has a, a, a heart problem, right? Uh, two days, not even 24 hours ago, yesterday morning, I had about 24 hours ago, and, and the New York Times has already put in a very, very extensive hit piece together on the good senator from Vermont. Right? 
So let's 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 look. Right? The Vermont senator had two stints inserted in the heart. Oh no, Bernie's headline: Bernie Sanders is hospitalized, raising questions about his candidacy. Raising questions to who? New York Times. Raising questions to you. The same questions you've been asking and raising since 2016 about Bernie Sanders. He was too old then. He he was too socialist then. He was he wasn't uh, uh, electable. All this bullshit, right now. So now they're they're intensifying the ageism attack. Ageism. That's what it is, right? He's too old. Well, and they picked the shittiest picture of him. Look, it looks like his shirt is out. Tuck his shirt in, Bernie. That's what it looks like, right? He pick his hair's all wild. He looks like he's about to have another heart attack. First of all, Bernie Sanders did not have a heart attack. So let's read. The Vermont senator had two stents inserted in an artery after experiencing chest discomfort at an event. His campaign canceled his event and said he would be resting for several days. Okay. Millions of people in America, I think the number is about 600,000 people in America every year have some sort of, some sort of heart ailment involving the coronary arteries where they're either bypassed or stints are inserted to get the blood flowing. Uh, so Bernie Sanders apparently has one artery. Some people have f- all five clog at once, or all four, quadruple. So Bernie Sanders has a heart at 78 years old, has an has a artery clog, and a stint or two are put in. Little, they're just like little, um, they're like little ZDs, you know, like the ZD macaroni, little tubes, right? And they go in there with a, they could kill you while they're doing this, but they go in there with a fucking with a with a ho- with a a long line, and they stick the the line right where the clog is, and they expand it, right, and then they leave a stint in there. They leave this circular zucchini fucking ZD looking thing, right, like a little tube, and they leave it in there so that the blood flows. And when you when they do that, you almost start to feel better almost elite, uh, immediately. Why? Because the blood is flowing. It's a good thing, right? Now, while they're doing that procedure, while they're sticking the ZD in your heart and expanding it, they could kill you doing that. that that's, you know, there's always a heart team, a heart, uh, you know, a, a heart surgery team on, on uh, standby while, you're, while they're doing that little procedure. Because if they do it and your artery pops, then they have to do a bypass surgery. So there is risk, but it was done successfully, and that's the end of, the, that's the end of it, right? You usually, people walk out the hospital in two days. Three days, they're done. You might have a sore, you might have a sore arm, depending on, like a wound, depending on how they went in, how they uh, accessed his heart. But that's about it. Bernie Sanders is a tough old man, you know, fuck that. You think he's going to bow out? He didn't have a heart attack. He didn't have any damage, any heart damage. They're not reporting that. There's no stroke. There's no, nothing. He had a fucking heart, some heart pain. He went under Novocaine, he whatever, the fucking knockout pills, probably fentanyl. And he wakes up and his heart is, you know, his heart is better than it was. That's not, that's not, you know, how do you justify saying, rage, raising questions about his candidacy? Right? So October 15th uh, debate is around the corner. Will he make it? Of course he will. Two weeks? Bernie Sanders will be there. Bernie Sanders was recovering in Las Vegas hospital on Wednesday after being treated for blockage of an artery, focus, forcing him to cancel his events in the coming days, and casting uncertainty over a candidacy already struggling to win new voters. Now, that's a blatant lie. Candidacy, candidacy struggling to win new voters. Where? Nobody has voted yet. And Bernie Sanders has more grassroots support than any other candidate in the lineup. Bernie Sanders has raised more money than any candidate in the lineup. So where do you come off saying winning new voters? Because, oh, the fake polls. Ah, oh, we'll lean on the fake polls. Don't look at the crowds. Don't look at the, the enthusiasm. Don't look at the money. Let's look at the fake polls that we pay for. CNN, New York Times, Politico. Uh, that's where you're getting your information from? Mr. Sanders, 78, experienced some chest discomfort at an event Tuesday night. A longtime advisor, Jeff Weaver, said a medical evaluation found blockage in one artery and two stints were inserted. Mr. Sanders' hospitalization is likely to intensify the focus on age in the Democratic race, even as much as the public debate has centered on policies like health care and immigration. Well, it, why would it center on age? That's ageism. It's not going to center on age, fucking New York Times. Fuck you. The, excuse me. The three... 
leading Democratic candidates, as well as the president, uh, they are veering to challenge, are all in their 70s. One of those Democrats, Biden, 76, has drawn his own age-related scrutiny because of his sometimes rambling discourse and uneven answers in debate. Well, Biden is a functioning idiot and shouldn't even be up there and probably won't be because he can't draw any people to his crowd. He he does a campaign, there's nobody there. So campaign aides did not provide any further information. So it's a hit piece. So Bernie Sanders, not even 24 hours later, is on Twitter saying, thanks all, thank you, thanks for all the well wishes. I'm feeling good. I'm fortunate to have good health care and great doctors and nurses helping me to recover. None of us know, none of us know when a medical emergency might affect us. And no one should fear going bankrupt if it occurs. Medicare for all. Ah, so even on his theoretical deathbed, Bernie Sanders is pitching Medicare for all. Uh, what a great American. That's a great American. So, again, New York Times is just a bullshit hit piece. They're, they're trying to cast, you know, a shadow over Bernie Sanders, you know, on... Uh, it's just bullshit, right? So... New York, New York Post took a little stab too. Bernie's wolves make woos make Liz Warren the new best bet in the to win the Democratic nomination. See anything but Bernie at New York Times. Anybody but Bernie. New York Post. Anybody but Bernie. Republicans. Anybody but Bernie. Fox News. Anybody but Bernie. Why? Because Bernie's the real shit. Bernie shit. Bernie Sanders. Bernie Sanders is the is the real McCoy. Bernie Sanders encompasses all of the policies that all of these wannabe candidates are orating. Single-payer health care for all, free college tuition at city and state universities, deflate the military-industrial complex, exclude, you know, uh, eliminate the uh, insurance, medical insurance uh, companies in this country. Uh, That's what Bernie Sanders is all about, get money out of politics. That's what the whole thing is about. So what do you do? You throw the ball. You th- Bernie Sanders is down. Right? He's holding his heart. He's clutching his heart. Right? He's trying to recover from a from a from a, a clog. And what are they doing? They're beating him down. Oh yeah, you know, Elizabeth Warren. She's better. Elizabeth Warren. Vote for Elizabeth Warren. We like Elizabeth Warren. No, no. Bernie Sanders casting casting doubt on his candidacy. He can't draw new voters, and uh, he's too old. And they make Elizabeth Warren look like a rock star. Ah, put on the rock star glasses, you old hag. Whatever you might think of his politics, Bernie Sanders is a wonder. Uh, So they're going to plug him a little bit. He has spent the past four years in tireless and relentless pursuit of his agenda, showing energy and stamina that would be impressive in people half his age. That's really true. I know people that have followed the campaign and say, I don't know how he does it. He puts on three campaign shows, three rallies in one day. And then and it does that seven days a week sometimes. And he doesn't he doesn't I mean people chasing him around are exhausted. How the hell does he do it? He's a powerful, powerful old guy. Wednesday's news that Sanders has had to suspend his campaign activities, allowing the insert of two stints in his heart, in no way mitigates his astounding his astounding achievement since 2015. This one time gadfly of the gadflies moved right into the center of American politics and shifted his party wholesale in his direction. You bet your fucking ass he did. You bet your ass he did. The whole rhetoric is Bernie Sanders, right? Bernie Sanders, man. He's gonna he's still in the race, man. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Bernie fucking Sanders. Right, so 2020, let's look at some of the fake polls. They're now casting Elizabeth Warren as the leader. All right. Because they know Joe Biden is a shit sandwich. Joe Biden is fading fast. Well that I mean, it just it's unthinkable that he's he's in the lead. It's just it's just unthinkable. Right? So Mammoth puts out a poll on October second, so that was yesterday. Biden twenty five, Elizabeth Warren twenty eight, Sanders fifteen. Right? Play down Sanders. Biden 22, this is The Economist, uh, YouGov. This is a respected poll, right? Amongst the fake polls, this is the, the one of the more, more respected polls. Biden 22, Warren 28, and Sanders 13. Wow. So, so in the two main polls yesterday, 
Elizabeth Warren is is kicking Joe Biden's ass, and they're they're portraying Bernie Sanders as a, as a close third. That's just bullshit. Uh, and the day before, Politico puts out one Biden thirty two over Warren's twenty one over Sanders nineteen. Uh, what else? Uh, so fake polls they they don't mean anything. They don't mean anything. They don't mean anything. They're paid for, they're bought and paid for by the DNC. So let's talk about the, the fake um, debate. October 15, DNC announces 12 candidate, announces 12 candidate single night lineup for fourth presidential debate. That's Andrew Yang talking, I don't know what he's saying. So the Democrats, remember when they said that, oh, no, no, there wouldn't be more than 10 candidates on the stage? Well, now there's going to be 12. Uh, they're just, they're just true, to, true to their colors, the DNC. Load up the platform, load up the stage with people that have absolutely no chance of becoming president, none. There's only five candidates up there that have, you know, any credibility or any chance at this point, and that's Biden, Sanders, Warren, Buttigieg and Harris. Okay? And Buttigieg is not going to be the president. Camilla Harris is not going to be the president. She's not, forget about it. Right? And Biden is fading. So really, there's only two main contenders. That's Bernie Sanders and that's Elizabeth Warren. And guess what? If one of them wins, they might just pick the other as the vice president. That's a killer team. Really, I, I, I'm almost, I'm almost you know, reluctant to say that Elizabeth Warren can't win, but with, with Bernie Sanders as a VP, that is a fucking killer team as well because you get the full grassroots support. Right? Now, I think that Bernie Sanders should be the president and Elizabeth Warren as a vice president where she can learn from Sanders and learn how to actually pitch real policy and, no, and non-negotiable policy, pitch non-negotiable policy, and then inherit that presidency from Bernie and continue. So here's what's going on. So 12 candidates, so there'll be one night. It's going to be a, a fucking shitstorm, right? It's going to be a scream fest, a, a, uh, a jostling match between 12 candidates. They'll probably knock it down to two hours instead of three. Uh, they're just going to, make it, they're going to make it miserable. They should have split it up into two nights, having six and six. Or you can even do it in one night. Do six early, six, you know... Six at, uh, for an hour and six at, or six for an hour and a half and another six for another hour and a half. Why can't you do that? Why, why, do, why do you have to have 12 people, you know, fucking shitstorm, shitstorm on stage? So Tulsi Gabbard <laughs> makes it to the debate stage. She got her 3%. Um, and Tom Steyer, businessman, billionaire, who the fuck is this guy? Who cares? About Tom Steyer. Uh, but, well, you know, it's nice that Tulsi Gabbard squeaked in. Uh, so it's the usual s suspects from the last time. Cory Booker, Camilla Harris, Bernie Sanders, Joe Biden, Elizabeth Warren, Pete Buttigieg, Andrew Yang, uh, Beto O'Rourke, still hanging in there, Amy Klobuchar, and Julian Castro. So those are the 12 that will hit the stage. The debate set to be hosted by CNN and the New York Times, will take place on, on Otterburn University's campus, I believe that's in Ohio, in Westerville at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard on October 15. The moderators will be CNN's anchors, Anus Cooper, excuse me, Anderson Cooper, Anison Cooper, and Aaron Burnett. Oh, they're, they're, they're not partial. They're not... Uh, they're not biased. They, they love everybody. Right? God damn, Anus Cooper. The New York Times uh, national editor, the New York Times that just stabbed Bernie in the back, has, a, has a, a commentator on stage. They just stabbed him in the back. So Mark Lacey right, is the editor, the New York Times national editor, Mark Lacey. Guarantee he's going to ask question, Bernie, don't you think you're too old? Don't you think you should step down? Don't you think you should throw in the, you know, throw in the towel? Don't you think you should end your, your, your candidacy and hand it to uh, Joe Biden? Uh, that's what they're going to ask him. Fucking a a idiots. Bernie Sanders should learn how to flip the finger. He should be like this. Oh, yeah, uh, excuse me. I got something for you. This is for you, right? This is for you and your question, uh, fuck you. 
<laughs> Imagine, I mean, I think Trump would kind of do that. Trump probably will if they if they attack him. Right? Bernie said, Trump has no bottom. Right? I love that about Trump, man. Trump has no boundaries, man. He's a no boundary motherfucker, man. I love that guy. I love him for what I love Trump for his no boundaries. I love that shit. The, the debate set to be hosted by CNN and New York Times will take place. I read that already, Conti. You read it twice. The DNC sent a memo to the campaigns Friday clarifying the debate would be one night. The DNC moving the goalpost. They said, no, 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 never more than 10 candidates. And here they are moving the goalpost. To address several inquiries we, we have received, we are writing to let you know that Pending a final decision after the certification deadline, it is the intention of the DNC and our media partners to hold the October debate over one night, the DNC memo obtained by ABC News read. Uh, so they're going for it. For the first two debates, the DNC limited the number of candidates on the stage to 10. For the third debate, which was hosted by ABC News and Univision in September, only 10 candidates qualified, but the DNC said if more than 10 qualified, the debate would be split over two nights. They're not doing that. Ah, cheating. It's rigging. Because you, want, you just want people screaming at each other. You don't want any policy talked about. Uh, thank you, Senator. You know, you get 30 seconds. Thank you, Senator. Thank you, Senator. Your time is up. Thank you, Senator. 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 Your time is up. Right, that's all you hear. Right, it's bullshit. Despite just missing the cut for the third primary debate, Steyer is making his debut appearance in a, de- in a debate since entering the race in early July. Gabbard is also returning to the debate stage after failing to qualify for September's debate. So here's, here's this guy, Steyer. Who gives a shit? Who gives a flying fuck? Right? And they also say that... Um, According to rules outlined by DNC, candidates had to meet um, 130,000 unique uh, donors and uh, in 20 states, blah, blah, blah. Right? But what, the rules don't matter because they're going to change the rules. Uh, they're saying now that the November debate, you have to have more than 3%. <clears throat> I think I misspoke. This debate, you had to have more than 2% support. The next one is 3%. What do you fucking do? Why don't you make it five percent? Why don't you? Why don't you? And, and look again. Even if it is three percent, they'll change those rules anyway. Because look, they do change the rules. They change the rules in the middle of the game. So, so there you go. That's uh, Marx Conte reporting on all this uh, on all this uh, fake fake shit that's going on. This fake fake motherfucking shit going on. Right? Oh, fake move for good class. Special process. And to reform our broken criminal justice system. Come on, Bernie, you can do it. You can win, Bernie. There is another injustice that we must address. And men, talking to the guys now, stand with the women and demand pay equity for women workers. Okay, women are cool. Look at the crowd. Look at the crowd, my God, holy shit, look at the crowd. 